Hello and welcome to Lawrence Place Factorio Space Exploration. No, Space Expansion, the other one. Space Expansion. <laughs> space Exploration will be the next series and I haven't started that yet. So we've come back to a fairly similar place to where we left off before. The research for the faster than light theory is still ongoing. As you can see we've now got onto um, D1 which means we're using the purple science along with the red, yellow and blue. And I've been having some problems with blue science production. It's just been a bit, I've been using it up a bit faster than I've been making it. So there's things have been grinding to a halt a few times. But I, th I, um, I think I've got, well, I think I've got a decent amount coming through. So, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. Unfortunately, all of the, um, all of the uh, researches, let's see where, I, what, what are all the FTL researches? So that one, that one, and that one. Is that it? Yes. Um, they all require blue, so I'm going to. I'm, it's not like I can go off and do a different one for ten minutes while I wait for blue blue science to reaccumulate uh, re again. Um, I have finished the, the one that's using the pink science though, so that's um, nice and out of the way. And I don't know where that is in the list, but no, I don't really care. So it's going quite well. I've got, as you probably remember from the last episode, I've got two massive science banks running here, one down here, one up here, and then one over here. So they're all ticking away quite nicely. I've also got my uh, construction robots going around picking up um, science, no, alien artifacts from the ground because, well, they're not doing anything else. I thought I might as well collect some up for uh, for any <laughs> any late, later purposes. So the thing I was going to talk about this um, episode is the production graphs here, which we, you can get that tells you how much of various different things you're using. And as you can see, the, by far the thing, I'm using, or the thing I'm using the most of by a fairly significant margin, it appears to be resistors, and that's because huge numbers of those go into every single um, every single uh, circuit board that's produced. We've got a nice big wave here from the um, oh, what's orange? Oh, cobalt steel ball bearings, apparently. So we could have to. Uh, no, this is the five second. Oh, I don't know. There's too many different graphs. Um, <laughs> oh, it's just all noise. Right. So those are the sort of things I'm producing a lot of. Um, there's a lot of iron being used, and that's because. And the reason there's so much more iron than anything else is because that goes into steel as well. And steel is something I'm getting through at a huge rate, and it requires a lot of iron to make to make one steel. But what's more interesting is if I can do a search here, I can pull out the the, uh, the numbers of science packs that are being used. And what's interesting is the consumption sort of blips up and down a bit like this, but then the the average is clearly sort of somewhere in the middle of about sort of nine, eight or nine thousand. Um, so that's the sort of the speed I'm doing. I'm currently doing research at. That's how many are being pulled through every minute, um, and that's that's quite impressive, I think. We're also building them at a um, similar rate, but not quite as fast. Unfortunately, the pink ones, which are this green, which is this green line here, um, aren't being produced as fast as they're being. Oh, hang on, actually, no, that's all right. They're pink, so that's the ones that are trying to sort of catch up with from um, having been used before. It's the purple ones that are being used at quite a rate and aren't being produced at all because we haven't. We've only done a little bit of this research so far, so we haven't got through through enough for them to have started emptying out of the stations yet. But as you can see, we're getting through about nine thousand, eight eight to nine thousand um, science packs per minute, and I'm only producing the. Uh, the blue science at about 7.8 per minute so this is this is why I'm having trouble with blue every so often it just runs out and I have to go and well I don't know I'm not quite sure exactly what I'm going to do what I have been doing uh, is to try and to try to get this bit better is I've been going through here and putting in more and more of these um, uh, sets of assembly machines to build them and so now as you can see here I've got almost a, a full green belt coming off there and that's a pretty good pretty good speed I'm ha generally happy with that um, and so yeah these are all running merrily with all of their um, uh, productivity modules and so on the problem I've been having a little bit with these is the rate they're getting through the uh, the red circuits at that seemed to be the the limiting factor as you can see this is nearly out again already although it has some under trains so we're probably all right there um, and the one up here, how's this one doing? That's okay for red circuits at the moment. It's, getting, it's, it's obviously piling piling them out at a hell of a rate up the belt, but but it does have enough for that to keep working. So I've been going in, and I've been looking at the red circuit construction here and trying to work out how to get more of them being produced. So I've got extra belts coming up here from the um, from the resistor factories. This is why I'm making so many so many resistors, um, and from here from the transistor factories. Um, and also, I think, did we have... Yes, we're also making the resistors, resistors directly for the yellow circuits here, so maybe this is something I should consider. Um, the problem is I would also need exactly the same for the transistors, because they're um, both being 
that it gets through both of them at something like five five transistors and five resistors per red circuit board so that's a bit hungry uh, as you can see I've got one and a bit full belt maybe one and a half full belts of each going up here they're disappearing into these machines and we're getting this is basically a full belt coming out it's not quite but it's pretty close and then a second one over here that's almost that's fairly close as well so we've got a decent quantity of red circuits being produced however they're still in a heavy, very heavy demand um, yeah there's there's not much I can, more I can do they, they're, they're being used up as fast as they're coming in essentially so there's a little bit of backup on the resistors but there's none at all on the transistors so if I wanted to get any more of those through I'm going to have to find ways of getting more through from the raw material so that means basically more of these factories more belts going up there I could actually I should come along and put um, productivity modules in these that will help a bit uh, let's let's do that can I call a summon a train to carry me up there yes there's one there I want you to come down here and pick me up so as I was saying there's um, yeah there's a, there's a chunk there where I've missed out the productivity modules that will help quite a lot um, but beyond that I mean the, the problem is this this belt of, of um, silicon wafers is it's not running absolutely flat out there are occasional pauses in it um, the plastic is only running at well the plastic and the the tinned wire I could I could add another belt in for those that that's a possibility but the tinned wire because it's being used for other things as well is going at significantly more than half speed through here so there's a bit of a shortage of that and then I have, every so often I run out of well tin this time it's usually copper but this time I've run out of tin so <sighs> run out completely here so the, the, the problem is each time you fix a problem you then end up just booting the um, the same you end up pushing the problem a little bit further up the um, up the, the chain of the production chain So if I if I add more red circuit production, then I don't have enough transistors or I don't have enough resistors. If I boost the resistor or the transistor production, then I don't have enough copper or I don't have enough tin in this case, or I don't have enough silicon or that sort of thing. So there's a lot of it, it's sort of it's not exactly a balancing act as such, but there's so many different things that everything relies on that you, you it's, it's as it always is with Factorio in vanilla or heavy mod packs. Each time you solve one problem, you realise that actually you've just made a there's a productivity problem somewhere just slightly further up the chain that you've just and you've just pushed everything back one, back a step. So yeah, oh, I could put productivity modules along all of these and halve the number of them. That would help um, because now I'm not going to be using quite some oh, quite so much of the tinned copper wire, but that's run out anyway, so that's going to cause that to stop. It's it's a bit of a tricky one. Um, where's that? Where's that tin? Plastic's running out as well. Oh no, plastic isn't running out. It's just the weird unloady thing. Um, yeah, sorry, I got I distracted myself a bit there. So what I've what I've just done there is get apart from get apart from getting stuck on the um, silicon plants there is I've, I've boosted the productivity in, in this section here. So that means we're going to double and a bit, to, uh, multiply by 2.6, the amount of uh, transistors coming out here. And that, I think, might well be enough to run all of these machines flat out, at least if I go up here and distribute the um, transistors properly. <laughs> and that should get me two absolutely full red belts coming out. So that should solve the problem, well, improve it, it for now. How are we doing down here? Oh, 92,000. That's not so bad, actually. Maybe the red belts... I think I think the um, the extra belts of, of um, stuff I've put in has more or less solved the um, the red belt, the red circuit problem. So I guess that means that the problem isn't with the uh, the red belts anymore. It's with the blue circuit product, the blue science production. And therefore, maybe I should make a copy of one of these. That's... Interesting thought. I think what I'm going to do is just leave it running for now and see how we get on now that I've put in a bit more now that I've fixed the red circuit problem and everything as far as I'm aware is running yes these are all going nicely these two yes they seem to have full supplies up here yep that's happy and finally this one yes they're all happy at the moment so that's good let's see, leave, let's leave it like that 
power is still good. We're not using any of the steam generation. That's fine. So we can have a look back at the um, the production stats again. And I think these I, I find these fairly interesting because I'm a massive stats nerd, as many of you will probably know. Um, the problem is there's just so many different things that are being produced. It's a bit of a a bit of a mess to try and read read anything out of the numbers. You can see the general trend upwards over the the time I've been playing. Um, Okay, that, that's about right. It's been a bit more than 250 hours, but that's close enough. So little little bursts of sort of crushed stone. I was making 800 of those a second or whatever, and now it's gone up to making 18,000 iron plate per second, per minute per sec. Must be per second. I think. Yes, yeah, two point. Oh no, 2.4 thousand per minute. Oh, so that's 18,000 in. No, I don't know. I don't know what these numbers are of. A four. Um, yeah, that must be per minute. And these these are also per minute. And it's just that it's come down again since that spike. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Okay, good. <laughs> Confusion solved. So as you can see, I've been ma uh, the, the thing. <laughs> the interesting thing is the thing I've made the most of has been crushed stone, but also uh, um, But that's because it's it's produced as a side effect from all of the ore refining. Um, fluids wise, you've got the same sort of thing. Um, <laughs> water has been the most common. That's not particularly surprising. Uh, a lot of that has been used to make steam. Buildings. What sort of buildings have I produced? 258,000 transport belts. Wow. Um, oh no, 263,000 tra of those transport belts. And then more of the others. There's 39,000 of the green ones. That's that's incredible. Um, pollution seems to be... You know, there's been a spike there. What's that from? Oh, it's from the assembly machines. So yeah, this massive spike here has been when I started putting uh, modules in the assembly machines, um, and it's just hugely boosted the amount of um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The amount of pollution generated by each one. <laughs> um, and over my time, I've killed 40,000 40, big spitters. They're the most common enemy, apparently. Interestingly, I've killed 93 electric poles, presumably by driving into them with a tank or something or the car. Um, and I've lost 3.3 thousand walls. That's a bit clumsy of me. I think a bit of these, quite a lot of these losses were when I was um, st sort of struggling with combat and just dumping stuff out in the way and then the biters would come running in and eat their way through a load of turrets and then I'd have to, I'd have to run away. So more recently I think these, these stats have got better. Um, in fact, let's see, this massive spike of... I lost a huge number of belts here. I wonder what happened then. I wonder what caused that. But otherwise, yes, it's been uh, recently. It's been fairly peaceful. There's been a few walls lost, but um, but generally, isn't not much has happened recently, which is what you'd expect given that I've got a little bit um, a bit better a bit better at the game, and I've got into a position where I've now, as far as I'm concerned, the biters are no longer a problem. They're all outside and at the area that I'm working in, and their their assaults can't do anything against my plasma turrets. So that's all fine. Science is going to be a good, um, and again, a good sort of feel for how the how the base has gone and how much I've boosted up my science science consumption and production to go with it, of course, recently uh, with the massive research um, things for the faster than light theory. Uh, up until about when is this? This is one. Well, it goes up to ten. So it's ten percent. Twenty-five hours ago. Jeez, that's a day of actually solidly playing the game. <laughs> that's, a sc that's a scary thought. Anyway, uh, that long ago was when I really started to get the boost up here and up to the sort of the doing so doing science really, really quickly, should we say? And as a, um, a sort of a curiosity for that, let's try doing one of the more normal science researches um, that uses normal science packs. So this is a good one: deuterium fuel cell. It's a 50, 50 research thing. Let's see how fast this goes. Um, that went so fast I didn't I was gonna go I was gonna watch it up as it went zip up across the screen but it went so fast I didn't even see it um, what else could we do this is this is a thousand okay this is this is a, a wide a wide spread of research types including military um, it needs a thousand of them let's see how long this one takes <laughs> that's brilliant I'm not going to get bored of that for a while, but no, let's get back to doing the FTL research because that's the um, the big ones that I'm actually trying to work towards at the moment. And then when it's when it's finished, maybe I'll pick off all the other other little ones. Okay, that's been um, a little bit different to a normal episode. I've normally I'd, I uh, talk about what I've been doing in, in, in sort of the ways I've been building things. Um, this time I've just sort of 
looked at the, looked at the stats and the graphs because I well I th I think that's quite kind of interesting. But then I am a massive stats nerd. I was also going to talk about um, the interesting things you can do with inserters in um, uh, with Angel Bobs because you've got all the modified ins weird weird inserter types. There was something in particular I was going to show. It was one of these. Yes, I think it was here. Um, where am I? Okay, I'll just run up there. Quick cut. Okay, here we are again. Right, so, when I was... Um, it turns out the, the limiting factor for this one, which is the pink science, um, was, the, uh, was the speed I was producing these yellow belts at. And, the speed, and that was limited by the speed I was able to produce these, um, these blue cogs, what are they, cobalt steel cogs at. So, in order to get a bit more construction going on here, I put in a second assembly building here. And the I'm sort of proud and also not proud of the way I've put the inserters in. So this one, for example, is 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 picking up from just just to its right, so out of this um, out of the assembly machine, and then dumping down three squares down and one square to the left to get them into this this machine. The one next to it is doing something similar. It's picking up from two down to get them off here and then dumping them into here. I'm pretty sure there was somewhere I used them and it was even more dirty. And that was down here where I'm building all of my assembly machines. So got, I set this up, I'm not going to say nicely because to be honest this is kind of ugly. Um, in that I start off with the one, two, three, four, five, six types of assembly machines across here um, with the associated stuff around to feed all, all of it down to them. Uh, then I realised I actually also wanted the, the better um, electronics assembly machines. And that was to allow me to come along here. Actually, I need to upgrade all of these. That'll help a lot. Yeah, so that um, because then if, with these, having upgraded these, I can now put significantly more um, productivity modules in them. So that takes that, uh, so that, uh, that allows me to put, I think, four in instead of two, or something like that, anyway. However, the problem was, in order to get these... I needed to turn the Mark IIs into Mark Threes, and the Mark IIs were here, but all of the sort of the posh stuff like blue circuits and um, titanium gears and bearings were all over here for these other machines. So what I ended up doing was using inserters like this one, which picks up from directly, sorry, picks up from all the way over to the left and a bit up. So that's picking up. So from this inserter over here, it's picking up out of this box and putting them into this machine. <laughs> um, in fact, let's make that put them down there. I suspect that'll be slightly quicker. Not that it actually matters for this sort of thing. Then I've got this one over here, which is picking up from here and dropping into this machine. Are these ones dirty? No, that one's that one's okay. That one's probably okay because it's feeding into there. How did I get the blue ones in? Oh yeah, the blue ones, and it also needs blue and titanium, that was even worse. So I've got the, this one in a slightly odd pattern, this one in also in a slightly odd pattern. And they're putting them, putting them, into, loading into this chest, and I've got circuit conditions to tell them when to stop. And then this inserter is picking up out of that chest, and again putting them down in this assembly machine here. So, it's a bit dirty. The other thing you can do that's quite fun is you can have, a, you can have an inserter pick up on one side of itself and then put down also on the other side so it's great so it doesn't need to swing back and forth uh, and it's all really quite useful um, because it allows you to do weird and difficult things like this and squeeze things in in places where you really wouldn't be able to otherwise but it does make me feel kind of dirty whenever I do it <laughs> it's worth it though so what was I saying oh yes I also need to, I also wanted to upgrade um, well let's upgrade the resistor production to higher a better um, assembly machines and that one and that one and then once I've saved up enough um, productivity modules I'll go down and put those in as well I've still not got any tin why is there no tin what's gone wrong oh there it is <laughs> um, okay apparently I summoned it by complaining about it that took a very long time to turn up with it with that tin so I've been talking about that all episode okay that's enough for, the, for one episode I've, I've rambled on for 20 minutes now that's that's disgraceful so we'll um we'll upgrade these i'll go in and shove some more modules in them they'll run even better and that should hopefully well and truly solve the general ele electronics stuff problems that i've been having and we'll um no doubt talk about that some more in the next episode
thank you for watching. I'll see you then. And uh, as always, if you have any questions, do let me know. But I'm still, yeah, I think I've said this. I've already said this a couple of times, but I'm definitely on the home straight. There can't be many more episodes in this, so uh, it won't be. It won't be long, and then we can then we can start over with something a bit more, uh, bit, a bit different and a bit more varied. Thanks for watching. See you later.